And you know, he said he wanted to do this show, and I'm just so grateful. I love you. And here's his story. First, tell me if you were a food, what would you be and why? I have a thing about this, but uh, it would be a papaya. Why? And, <laughs> and the, reason, the reason for the papaya is that it brings back uh, memories of myself traveling overland around the world for 18 months after graduate school. But, uh, but it ties together many, many other uh, trips that I actually had over the years. Because if we know the papaya can be found in tropical countries, it can be eaten in Mexico. And then even in uh, Peru, by one of my last uh, international adventures, having papaya um, smoothies every single day for, for a week. And then, and then Kathy and I, uh, we actually have probably a papaya once, once a week. So it kind of ties it all together. A little love. Yeah. Love you. Thank you for having me. I'm going to go eat my menu. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm going to make sure I don't fall off the stage here. So, <clears throat> so any, anyway, um, I grew up in, in West Los Angeles, um, and a uh, Sunday was never without uh, uh, bagels, lox, whitefish, and, and cream cheese. Um, we would uh, go to our local delicatessen in West, in West LA. And it was probably, I think it was probably called K's. What's really interesting is it's now a, a vet, but it was there for quite a long time. And the, and the, a vet, they're a veterinary, the place where, where, I used, where I used to go for, for. And I, I suspect that this was back in the 60s, it was probably uh, um, the uh, Los Angeles Smoked Fish Company, which was actually in South LA, with the initials of Lasco. And so we, we actually had our products uh, here in, in Los Angeles. And so you begin to think about, okay, so, so what is lox? I mean, we associate it very much a Jewish food, but it's now all over. But lox itself is a Yiddish word, a German word for, for salmon. So, 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 when the, so when the Jews came on into uh, New York, they were used to getting herring. But herring was actually quite expensive, but salmon was uh, quite cheap, and they would bring it on in from the Pacific uh, Northwest. And so, so lox, as we see in, the, in a Jewish deli, is really uh, lightly brined, and then it's cold smoked. Okay. So if you look at the delis today at your local grocery store, you may see grab lox, which is a Scandinavian version, and you may see smoked salmon. We probably had some tonight back there. And they're all made in, in different ways, but the but the lox is a, a special method, and I've been uh, having it since uh, probably I was three or four years old. Anyway, when, so when I started at the Los Angeles Redevelopment Agency, and I worked there for for 30 years, uh, my my supervisor probably the very first thing she did was to take me into the arts district at a place called Three Star Smoke Fish Company. Now, now the art this was 1980. Four, and the arts district was nothing like it is today. But we're talking about uh, you know artists living in rundown places, and uh, and it was really a, a working industrial area. So so three star smoke fish company it, on the weekends on a Sunday it was cash and carry, which meant they called in advance and you had to bring dollars on and and you were able to get a uh, uh, box that's being made in the smokehouse and whitefish that's made right there, about as fresh as you can be. You've never tasted anything like it. And this is, this is uh, uh, at wholesale. So, so I mean, it's, the prices have pretty much stayed the same. We're talking about, oh, 25 to $30 for a Fernova lox and an entire whitefish, like about $30. So, so you can imagine going into Three Star Smoke Fish Company and being able to uh, buy a pound of, of the very, very best lox for, for $15 a pound. And you have to buy these things in, in larger in larger quantities. So um, so it, it was a uh, something I would greatly do. And, we, and then, uh, as many people know, I uh, um, uh, in addition to my life at the uh, at CRA LA, I also was very much involved in the Long Beach uh, Jewish community. And so we did Super Sunday, and 
And so I actually said, oh, let's go reach out to uh, Three Star and get them to donate uh, of lox and cream cheese mixed together. Because we had, oh, probably, could be 100 volunteers where we do a, an all-day telethon. It was called Super Sunday, and we raised well over $100,000. This was an event I chaired, and we were on the phones all day. But we made a community event, so we had a lot of different things going on. The community came on in, everyone pitched on in, and we had all sorts of food. But again, so Three Star pitched on in. So, so Three Star is, is down there. So during the holidays, I'd go on down, and then word kind of got out that I have this connection. So, so friends would, they would say, hey, can you, uh, can you get me some, uh, some lots at wholesale? Can you get me some whitefish? So over, so over the years, so first starting at my at redevelopment agency and, at, uh, uh, and where my wife worked at Long Beach uh, Jewish Federation and our friends at the Long Beach Jewish Community Center, the orders would come on in, and we're talking, I mean, first with $100, and then $200, and $300. It would keep, it would keep increasing. So, uh, um, so anyway, one, one year, the, um, the, the current location where Unfactory Place, factory, so uh, three stars right across from the LA Times, and they had not been the original location I was used to going, but anyway, they, in early 2000, 2001, 2002, they saw what was happening in the Arts District and they realized, hey, maybe they should just consolidate to one of their other facilities over in the Central Industrial Area and take, and take their um, industrial facility and turn it into loft housing. So what they did, they moved, they moved Three Star on, into the Central Industrial Area. And, uh, and so they have many different labels, Lasco, Lasco, Ocean Beauty, I mean, there's, there's a whole bunch of them. And uh, they're a big uh, uh, product of Costco. So one, one day Costco comes down to actually look at the facility, and you gotta realize the, the central industrial area, I mean, they have, there's homeless issues. There's, there's, uh, it's not very clean down there, and the Costco people say, Oh, this is you know this doesn't work for us. We we, we need you to move, take your operation and move it up to Kirkland and start making up the uh, locks for our stores. And for, so what they did, they they shut down the uh, Three Star Smoke Fish Company in the Central Industrial Area. So so this was so in about this was probably 2010. So the question came on up. So here it is, holiday time. And, the, and everyone's asking, okay, so where's our locks and, and whitefish? So I, I have to come on up with another location because my source is gone. There's hundreds of jobs probably were lost and got relocated. And so I, I hunted around and I found actually another, um, another uh, wholesaler and they have a connection with, uh, with Acme out of, out of Brooklyn. Now many, many of your delicate castles, you'll, you'll find uh, the product is, is the Acme uh, Locks and whitefish. So, so this last, so this very last order, and, and again, uh, this was uh, the holiday period of December of 2010. And, and and the reason why this is all being bought at this time is people are having Hanukkah parties. So they want their whitefish, they want their locks, and they they're going to go out and get bagels. And in fact, we just finished Yom Kippur yesterday, and many people break their fast with uh, locks and bagels and green cheese, but, but anyway, so, so this very last time in, in 20, 2010, the order was, it was approximately $600 worth of, of food at wholesale prices. And so, uh, so my late wife and I, Karen, the two of us, we, these things, they would come in five pounds boxes, one pound each on the, on the lock, so we'd have to break it on down into, into the smaller sizes. It was either three to five uh, whole white fish and, uh, per box. So we had to take the tin foil and wrap the fish on up, and so then we'd go around and, and I would be distributing uh, white fish and locks, both at my work, and, and she would be distributing her work at the Long Beach, at the uh, Jewish Family Service LA, and so we and so this was like the, the biggest uh, distribution of this that we've ever done. Now, now you, you may ask, so so what 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 happened to uh, Three Star Smoke Fish Company uh, Loft? Well, it took several years, but it actually is um, Loft Housing, right there on, on Factory Place, and 
And the arts district today is, is quite a different place than when I started to work for the redevelopment agency in 1984. It is the, one of the most trendy neighborhoods, still without sidewalks, but you have some of the, the best roasters in the United States that have set up shop down there. You have beer be, being brewed down there. You have artisanal uh, spirit making. And you have some of the best restaurants that have shown up in the, in the arts district. But that, so this is a very much a changing face of, of Los Angeles, what has happened there. And, and the, but if you say, well, where can I get great locks? Well, we're, we're in locks. So, so Grand Central Market, one of my projects I worked at over all my 30 years at the redevelopment agency, uh, when they kind of repositioned a number of the food vendors, uh, they brought in Kyle Wexler, who started making locks the old-fashioned way, and it's actually some of the best locks you will find here in Los Angeles. And since he couldn't keep up with the demand there at the Grand Central Market, he opened another place in uh, Santa Monica. So go check out Wexler's if you want to have some outstanding locks, and that is my Hanukkah Locks story.